there is a world that's been out of reach until now. Two seas lie on either side of Saudi Arabia. One sea is beautiful, flamboyant, and sophisticated. The other is across the desert, a younger sea, secretive, tougher, different. Little in these two sister seas is as it appears. This is a story of miracles, where you would least expect them. The two seas reach around the desert peninsula of Arabia like two arms. Millions of years ago, this was underwater. On the sea floor, a deep compost built up. It's still here, hidden under the sand as oil. The wealth of a long gone sea now fuels our world. The natural riches of the past, as well as the present, are part of this story. 10,000 years ago, the Gulf was a swampy flood plain. When the sea level rose, it disappeared under water. The Red Sea was formed much earlier, as Africa and Arabia's tectonic plates pulled apart, leaving a chasm a mile deep, now filled with seawater. The edges, fringed with coral, disappear into the depths. The reef is a jeweled city perched on the cliff top. It's a community with amazing relationships between animals. Five centimeter wrasses groom sweet lips, even combing the tender gills. They eat any parasites and dead skin, a reward for their trouble. A moray eel, the two and a half meter dragon of the reef, is attended by shrimps. They enter the jaws of death to keep razor-sharp teeth clean in exchange for any morsels they find. No opportunity is wasted, however desperate it may seem. Damselfish hide in an anemone, protected by tentacles that would paralyze other fish. An anemone can close, and the local clownfish is finding his home a tight squeeze. Every relationship can have difficult moments. This underwater community lies along the shores of ancient human settlements. The Middle East is the birthplace of our civilization. Over 4,000 years ago, the first cities rose here, the cradle of mathematics, astronomy, and medicine. If the Garden of Eden's rivers flowed anywhere, it was into the Gulf. Ancient Mesopotamia was on the northern shoreline, with Persia to the east. The dust of history has settled in the Gulf as sand and mud. 
The sea is like a hot tub. It gets hotter and saltier than any other open sea in the world. It's surprising that corals can survive. They have miraculously found ways to cope, much to the excitement of scientists. There are other clues to hidden riches. A turtle on its way to find food. It's different from the Red Sea Reef. This is more like a bombed out city, devastated by heat and salt. Small squid begin a dance, courting in a psychedelic language of hues and colors. Life in all its wonderful forms will emerge in the Gulf, though it's never obvious. Reefs here are small and isolated. Submerged sandy plains are an extension of the Arabian desert. But here, underwater, rocks turn into cuttlefish on closer inspection. Fan worms cast their nets. And unseen animals clean out their burrows, making miniature volcanoes. An eye and a gill belong to a ray. Thousands of square kilometers of sand have been colonized by seagrass. The underwater meadows may not look like much, but this is one of the most productive habitats on Earth. Its riches are hard to see. Blennies hide in holes. A two-meter annulated sea snake is one of the most venomous creatures in the world with several times a rattler's killing power. He hunts fish like little blennies. Got one. Across the gulf, green turtles return each winter to the seagrass beds. They often have passengers, remorers or suckerfish, that feed in the stirred-up mud. Many turtles graze only on the grass, but get extra protein from the microscopic animals encrusting each leaf. The strong sunlight filters through warm, shallow water. It's perfect for grass and algae. Most life stays hidden in the mud until disturbed. The blue crab demands some privacy and the giant vegetarian obliges. The two sister seas are very different. The gulf shyly hides its wealth. The aging Red Sea flaunts extravagance. The diamond clear water of the Red Sea reveals the truth. Unlike the muddy gulf, the reef has few nutrients in the water. The oasis seems to grow out of nothing.
A reef is built by tiny animals. Coral polyps construct limestone tower blocks, protection against fish and crabs. Microscopic plants, algae, live in the polyps and convert sunlight to sugar, which feeds the coral. This city is solar powered. For millennia, the entrepreneurs here have slowly evolved an intricate society. The edge falls away, and any nutrients from the reef fall away too, like food tumbling off the edge of a table. Tiny mouths try and grab a meal as it sinks into the dark, unexplored depths a mile below. Along these city limits, gangsters prowl. Blue-finned Trevally are predatory hunters cruising the hood. The wolves of the Red Sea Reef, Trevallis, are hunting through a nursery school of juvenile fusiliers. The Trivalli continue along the wall, searching for anything that strays too far for falling scraps. Two-meter wire corals reach further than most, and an enterprising little shrimp has made his home out on a limb. He survives by collecting passing morsels. His frontier post puts him into a shoal of sleek unicorn fish. The drop-off attracts large schools, but there is an even greater wildlife gathering on the other side of Saudi Arabia. The Gulf is a hot, shallow sea, hardly an enticing destination. Yet here are a quarter of a million Socotra cormorants, three quarters of the world population. Socotra cormorants breed here in winter on isolated islands. Featherless chicks shiver each morning. Nights are cold here. Life in the colony is dangerous, loud and smelly. Chicks are of various ages and the older ones hang out in gangs. The younger chicks still need babysitters. Everyone is hungry. Gulls attack undefended chicks. Even cannibalism is common. Temperatures swing from too cold to too hot in a few hours. Birds can't sweat and pant desperately to keep cool. There's no shade and no food. <laughs> 